This is basic enlisted submarine school, Groton, Connecticut. Here, would-be submariners get their first taste of the complex world Rickover created. Hey, hey, Captain Green! Hey, hey. These young men are all volunteers who have made it through the submarine Navy's initial selection process. Uh, the main thing the Navy looks for in choosing its submariner was intelligence. They want the smartest possible people they can get because uh, the more intelligent the person, the more things he can do, and the more and the better he's going to do them. Most of these men are just a few months out of school. Actual service on a submarine is just a hazy dream. Most of them haven't seen as much of submarines as this film has shown you. Essentially, what you're looking at here right now is a ship's control diving and diving trainer. To prepare these sailors for the intricacies of submarining, the Navy has developed an apprentice system and some elaborate simulators. What you're going to learn here today is essentially how to dive and drive your submarine. And this trainer... Petty Officer Keith Swallow has ridden the boats for 14 years. Okay, Kegel, drop on in the inboard chair. Matuzic, drop into the outboard chair. Buckle up. All right, here's where we're at. You got a 360 foot long, multi-million dollar submarine right in your hands. We're gonna crank up a flank bell, we're gonna bring her to periscope depth, and you're gonna reach and maintain periscope depth. You ready to do it? Yeah. All right, yes. take control. Whoa. I think what you're doing wrong here is you're putting too much angle on those planes. Remember, we're hauling it. We're booking through the water, flank bell. Minimize use of the planes, and it'll be a lot easier to maintain trim angle. Don't go no more than 5 to 10 degrees, okay. either rise or dive on the planes, and you'll find out it's easier to catch the bubble and lock it right in there. Flooding in the torpedo room. Flooding in the torpedo room. <laughs> officer to the deck, we can't maintain order depth. Recommend emergency surface. Diving officer, emergency surface to shit. Full rise, stern plane to spare water planes. <laughs> Surface, surface, surface. Okay, hang her in there, hang her in there. Watch that trim angle. Get her down, get her down. Give me a little bit of, bring her down a little bit more. All right, brace yourselves, we're gonna approach. Remember, we still got flooding going on back there in that engine room. We don't know what the status is on that. This is exactly the way it's gonna happen on the boat, guys. You're gonna come right up, she's gonna pop right out of the water and drop back in. Well, you see, guys, we're not like surface craft. We have a problem out there. We can't call in the Coast Guard to help us. We can't put life rafts into the water. Normally, when a casualty occurs on a submarine, we're underwater, we're down deep. And the only thing that's going to save us in that boat is the capability of the crew. There is an element of psychological stress involved with this. First of all, because you're talking a submarine here. And uh, no matter how good I am as an instructor in describing for them uh, what's, what's going to be required of them, it's still hard for them to visualize actual duty on a submarine, okay, and um, there's that fear of the unknown. The major part of our submarine budget is going to be spent on you guys. Submarine crews, schooling, extensive training, damage control training, they're going to pump some big bucks into you guys, but it's going to pay off. One day out there in the ocean, one remote instance where a casualty goes down, with the training you've got, you might just be the guy that's going to be there when it starts. And with your training, you'll be able to jump right on that casualty. You'll be able to save your life and save your ship. All right, what you're looking at here is a damage control wet trainer. One thing I want you to notice, it's a small, confined area. I'm going to put you down here at the start of the casualty, and we're going to turn on water flooding to simulate flooding on a submarine. All right, do a good job, take your time. Safety is priority one. Make it happen. How you doing, Chief? All right. We all ready to go? Yep. Okay, what I'd like to start them out with is a uh, port and starboard lube oil. Let them get the initial report and sound the collusion alarm off, and then we'll hit them with the ASW suction. 
Floating in the engine room. Floating in the engine room. There we go. Submariner has only got one enemy, and that is the sea itself, pressing in inexorably at something like a quarter of a ton on every square inch of his hull or thereabouts. That is the implacable enemy. When he has a, a war enemy, the Soviets or somebody else who's firing shots at him, it's not like being a soldier in the field, afraid of being blown up on a mine or being uh, uh, killed by a rifle shot or hit by a shell. It's not like that. All his enemy is trying to do is to let the real enemy get, in, get at him, to let that sea into the hull. Now, from that comes the fact that submariners have to be very much more alert, and they're fighting a war every second of the day. They're fighting a war against the greatest enemy of all, the sea itself. <laughs> Scene control, training time out, all stop. All right, let me get in there and yell at him. Go in there and tell him to regroup and we'll try it again. Listen to me. Come here. Yeah. You're the man in charge at the scene, right? Uh-huh. You got a flooding casualty. Uh-huh. It's not enough that you just assign people to go fight it. You got to follow up on it. You got two guys on that plant that have been standing up there picking their damn noses for the last two and a half minutes when you got 700 gallons a minute coming into the trainer. If you see that they're not getting the job done, take them off the job and get two more guys up there. All right. You ready to start again, Chief? All right, let's stick it to him. Hit him with the flange, Chief. Flange on. I should make believers out of them. All right, now they know what flooding is. <laughs> Welcome to the submarine force, gentlemen. Uh, 600 gallons and rising. You work with each other day in and day out on these boats. You're in a very enclosed environment. And the teamwork is a big part of it. Working together, getting along together. You're going to hear arguments, and you're going to hear bickering. But in the final analysis, no one holds a grudge forever. And believe me, there's no secrets on a submarine. None. You having problems with the wife or the girlfriend, eventually it's going to go out. And guess what? The rest of the crew is going to help you solve that problem to the point where there's going to be times where you think you're serving on that submarine with all your older brothers and all your uncles. And that's the big difference between us and the surface Navy. They don't get that tight together out there in the surface fleet. On a submarine, we do.